Hindu scriptures consider menstruation to be a defiled act. The reason why menstruation is considered unclean or is hated has its own myth. According to Hindu scriptures, menstruation is the curse of King Indra and the blood that comes out during menstruation is the color of bloodshed. While the king of gods Indra was with a woman from earth, a demon attacked heaven and captured his kingdom. When deposed, Indra could not get it right, so he cursed the woman in rage, accusing her for losing this kingdom. Due to which, even today, women are forced to suffer the sin. This myth has religiously forced women to admit that they are sinners. Another mythology explains menstruation with a story dating back to the Vedic times. In a fit of fury, Indra Dev killed a demon named Vritrand who committed the crime of Brahmahatya, killing a Brahmin. When his prayers to Lord Vishnu were answered, he was suggested to divide the burden of his crimes among earth, tree, water, and women. However, the curse had to be passed along with a blessing. So, women got the blessing with the ability to bear a life, but at the same time got the curse of menstruation. It is written in our scriptures that during menstruation, certain things should be followed and menstruating women should live separately. Such a book was written at a time when there was no science, there was no knowledge about the human body, there was no research. Times have changed now. Today's science proves that during menstruation, one should stay clean, laugh, eat healthy, and if possible, take a bath and change our clothes every day. It is believed that Rishi Panchami is the day used to wash away the sins committed during menstruation. Menstruation is a phenomenon unique to girls. However, it has always been surrounded by taboos and myths that exclude women from many aspects of social cultural life. Such taboos about menstruation present in many societies impact women's mental health, lifestyle, and most importantly, her physical health itself. Menstruation is a natural process of the reproductive system in which blood from the uterus exits through the vagina. It is a natural process that first occurs in girls usually between the age of 11 to 14. And it is one of the indicators of the onset of puberty among them. Despite being a phenomenon unique to girls, this has always been surrounded by secrecy and myths in many societies. Taboos surrounding menstruation exclude women and girls from many aspects of social and cultural life. Some of these are helpful but others have potentially harmful implications. In all religions and cultures, there is some confusion about menstruation. In Christianity, women are not allowed to pray during menstruation. In Islam, fasting and praying are forbidden. While in Buddhism, women's menstruation is considered unholy. Culturally, in many parts of Nepal, menstruation is considered to be dirty and impure. In Hindu faith, people are prohibited from participating in normal life while menstruating. She must be quote-unquote purified before she is allowed to return to her family and day-to-day -day chores of her life. However, scientifically, it is known that the actual cause of menstruation is ovulation, followed by a missed chance of pregnancy that results in bleeding from the endometrial vessels and is followed by a preparation of the next cycle. Therefore, there seems to be no reason for this notion to persist that menstruating women are quote-unquote impure. Many girls and women are subject to restriction in their daily lives because they are menstruating. Not entering the puja room is the major restriction among urban girls, whereas not entering the kitchen is the main restriction among the rural girls during menstruation. Menstruating girls and women are also restricted from offering prayers and touching holy books. A temple, however, has nothing whatsoever to do with a woman being impure. It is further believed that menstruating women are unhygienic and unclean and hence the food they prepare or handle can get contaminated. However, as long as general hygiene measures are taken into account, no scientific tests has shown menstruation as the reason for spoilage of any food in making. 
there are myths that sanitary products should be kept private and covered in papers while purchasing. But in fact, buying sanitary products is like buying toothpaste or soap. They are all personal hygiene products. There are myths that food like curd, tamarind, and pickles disturb the menstrual cycle. The fact is, the food you eat does not decide the flow of your periods. There are myths that girls having their periods should sleep in a separate room, but in fact, menstruation is not contagious and causes no harm to anyone else in the same room. There are myths that any form of physical activity can disturb the menstrual flow. The fact is that exercise and playing sports can actually help relieve cramps during menstruation. There is a misconception that such a woman will not get pregnant if she bleeds less during menstruation, but that is not true. Blood volume may vary from woman to woman. Sexual intercourse during menstruation can cause pregnancy as well. The average menstrual cycle is 28 days, but a shorter or longer cycle doesn't necessarily mean your health is at risk. A woman's menstrual cycle can range anywhere from 21 days to 35 days depending on her age and various other health factors. Periods can be irregular due to stress or illness. Not every woman gets her period and not every female who gets period consider themselves a woman. Some transgender men and non-binary people may get their period just as transgender women and non-binary people might not have periods. Menstruation isn't always just a woman's issue, it is a human issue. Chopadi is a form of menstrual taboo which prohibits women and girls from participating in normal family activities while menstruating as they are considered quote-unquote impure. Chopadi is said to be practiced primarily in the western part of Nepal, but the same is true for city dwellers also. During Chopadi, women are banned from the house and are made to live in cattle shed, mainly in the western region of Nepal, or a makeshift dwelling known as a menstruation hut for the duration of their period. During menstruation, women and girls are restricted from participating in everyday life events and from interacting with their communities. The practice of topadi originates from the superstition that menstruation causes women to be temporarily impure. This superstition arose from a myth that Indra created menstruation as a means to distribute a curse. In this belief system, it is thought that if a menstruating woman touches a tree, it will never again bear fruit. If she consumes milk, the cow will not give any more milk. If she reads a book, Saraswati, the goddess of education, will become angry. If she touches a man, he will be ill. This practice persists in rural areas, primarily in the western Nepal. It is also called Chue or Bahirinu in Dadildhura, Baititi and Darjula, Chaupadi in Atsam and Chakula or Chaukudi in Bajahang district. The tradition begins with an adolescent girl's first menstrual cycle during which she remains in the shed for up to 14 days. Afterwards, she must spend the duration of each monthly period in the shed until she reaches menopause. Additionally, women who have just given birth must stay in the shed with their children for up to two weeks. Menstruating women and girls are required to remain isolated from their family and are forbidden from entering homes, kitchens, school, and temples. During this time, they remain in what is often known as a menstruation hut which is usually made from wood or stone. In some locations, women may stay isolated from their family in a separate room attached to the house. They may not touch family members, especially male family members, and food and water are passed to them in such a way as to prevent touching. Menstruating women are also restricted from participating in family, religious, and social functions such as attending the temple or going to weddings and girls are prevented from going to school as well. 
Chowpadi was outlawed by the Supreme Court of Nepal in 2005, but the tradition has been slow to change. In 2017, Nepal passed a law punishing people who force women into exile during menstruation with up to three months in jail or even a fine of 3,000 Nepalese rupees. If menstruation is a sin, then it is a sin to touch others at this time, according to beliefs. There are innumerable temples of goddesses like Saraswati, Durga, Lakshmi, Parvati, Sita. We go to worship those temples. Going there is not hindered by any month, time, or day. And if goddesses Saraswati, Durga, Lakshmi, Parvati, Sita are women, then they will also be menstruating every month. Did they leave the temple when they were menstruating? If women are untouchable during menstruation, should not those who build temples for goddesses make them have a place to stay during menstruation? Therefore, even though menstruation is a natural law, the beliefs that one should not touch others during menstruation, one should not go to temples, one should not eat sweet and nutritious food is just a myth. Over the years, care became cursed and got manipulated into stigmas and taboos. All these norms were created by our ancestors only to make sure that during the period of blood loss, a woman could get maximum rest. Menstruation is a wonderful creativity given by nature for creation of a new life. It is not difficult to understand that this concept is for women to take a rest during menstruation. It is a custom established for the sacred purpose of liberating women from the clutter of many everyday things and relaxing their bodies. With proper hygiene and regular exercise, the pain, the weakness could be minimized to some extent, but that also vary on individual level as some can work more while others may require proper rest. With education and with time, we are moving ahead. It has really been a slow process and it's still in practice as in many households. For a country like Nepal, where many women die by following this taboo of prohibition in following menstrual hygiene, it is a long way fight with cultural following and disbelief, which has been the main obstacle in normalizing menstruation in Nepali household. Normalizing this requires us working together in educating our common circle and practicing normalization in our own household by asking our female family members, co-workers, colleagues, school friends during periods if they need any assistance, help, or even sanitary pad if you see them in pain and discomfort. Government has started paving road to right direction by providing sanitary pads in school and local level. But there are still a lot to be done and a lot that can be done. Scotland became the first country in the world to make and provide sanitary products free, which is the biggest leap of example. Out of many things, we can at least make schools and offices having women-friendly toilets so they don't have to be an embarrassment in sudden period call. Many women avoid long travel for the same sanitary reason. So by making public women toilets accessible with sanitary pads, it will help and encourage normalization of menstruation and even empower women at the same time.